In this video, we are going to look at probability density functions, and we'll work through an example and answer all of the key concepts that are asked in IB Maths exams. So we have a probability density function here, and if you haven't explored what this topic is actually talking about, I do encourage you maybe type probability density functions into YouTube and watch a video, and it's, it's quite fascinating once you realize that a probability density function is just the derivative of a cumulative frequency curve and all of the areas uh, they correspond to y values on a cumulative frequency curve and it's a it's a very beautiful topic but we'll, well in this video we'll just go through all the key concepts that you'll need for your exam okay so if we have a function given the first thing that they'll ask for uh, potentially is the mode so the mode if we have a probability density function uh, we can find by graphing our function and finding where the maximum is. So let's, let's get our calculator out. Now, if we graph our function, so let's set up a fraction first. So negative 3x squared over 32 and then plus 3x on 8. We might need to change our zoom here. So let's go to our window and zoom. Now our domain is from zero to four. So I'm going to choose negative one to five just so I can see both ends. And my, y, my x scale is one. And my y, my y max shouldn't get higher than 0 0.5. So I'm going to make it one and make this negative one. Okay, so this is our probability density uh, function here to find the mode we want to find the max so we go to our calculator and find the maximum and we want to be looking at the x value for all of these because the x value will be the some score between 0 and 4 and it's some it's one of our uh, one of our possible outcomes for our continuous random variable the y value here is actually the probability uh, associated with all these functions, but we want the x value for the mode, so the mode will be 2. Now the median, with a probability density curve, the area underneath this function will equal 1 between our given domain. We can check that by finding the integral between 0 and 4, and it, it was 1. Uh, so if we were to consider, well, the median will be the 50th percentile. So when this area will be 0 0.5, if we start at the minimum and we work our way across. So if I get rid of this and go back to my integral and I start at 0 and I keep going until I've encapsulated half of the data. So 50%, in this case, it will be somewhere around here. And we can do this on our calculator using our integral um, and end solve buttons. So I'll show you how we can do that. So if we exit up here, if we go back and grab our function, control C, and we set up a new page, we can do the integral inside of an end solve. So I'm going to set up an end numerical solve. Now it's going to be the integral between some point on our x, which will be our median. So I'm going to put m for median, and zero was our min. And we need to put our function here. So I'll paste our function in, and it will be dx. And when does this equal, when does this equal one half? So 0 0.5, so that means half of the, uh, half of, or 0 0.5 of an area is underneath our curve, which will be our median. And we want to solve for m here. So we need to put comma m. Now, this is the result if you didn't define our minimum point for m. So I'm just going to control C, control V again here. And if you do get a negative answer, that doesn't really make sense here because x needs to be between 0 and 4. So we can do it again, but put comma 0, and it will give us our next value, which will be 2, uh, because hopefully you realize that our data here was symmetrical, so our median will be right in the middle here at 2. Okay, so we can find the median by setting the integral of our median to 0 of our function equal to 1 half, and our median was 2. Okay, the mean, which is often referred to as the expected value 
or you might see it as mu. They're all the same thing. We can use this function up here, the expected value of a continuous random variable, which is the expected value or mu. And this is just the integral between our given limits of x multiplied by our function. So it'll be the integral uh, between 4 and 0 of, and we can just multiply our function by x. So it'll be negative 3x cubed now over 32 plus 3x squared over 8 dx. And we can just use our calculator to solve this. So let's go back to our calculator. I'll grab our function here. And we'll set up a new integral between 4 and 0. And now this was cubed and this had a squared and we have dx. So this will be our mean, which is also 2. So if you do have a probability density function, which is symmetrical, our mean, median and mode will all be in the middle. It'll be a 2. Okay, and the other things they might ask for is the variance. So the variance of our continuous random variable. And we can use uh, the variance of a continuous random variable formula here, which will be the integral uh, of uh, our function with an x squared at the front. And we need to subtract uh, mu squared. And we just found that here. Uh, so it will be 2 squared. So let's set up that integral. So we would have a very similar looking function to here. So I'm going to control C and control V this one. Uh, but now we had x squared. So this will become x to the power of 4. And this will become x to the power of 3. So this will be this first section here. And then we'll have 4.8. And we need to subtract our mean squared. So 4.8 subtract 2 squared. And so this will give us 0 0.8. And if I do ask for the standard deviation, we know the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Or we can say the variance is the standard deviation squared. So the standard deviation will be the square root of 0 0.8. So we can subtract 4 and then the square root of that will be uh, 0 0.89. We'll go 894. 0 0.894. Okay, so this is how we solve these types of questions. If they do ask for the probability of maybe our random variable being between 0 and 1.5, all we need to do is just set up an integral between 0 and 1.5 of our data here. Now, these questions don't usually get too complicated unless they're in uh, the more problem solving sections where they might tie in another one of the distributions. But uh, hopefully you now get the key concepts of the mode, the median uh, and the mean and to find the variance and standard deviation uh, of a probability density function. Okay, good luck.